put something down and what I are you looking for where i put the tape measure right there <laughs> the tape measure So we're back this morning before we head into the shop to do a really quick little project uh, and that is to make sure that the car or the chev that is is sitting properly on the frame if i'm going to start building body mounts for it next week i need to find the same point here 18 and a half 18 and a half okay these holes so no these where the bolts are to these bolts so what we can do then is we can measure here to here is 37 and a half fish and here ooh, 35 and a half so she's gonna come over this way about 37 and a half, about an inch. So, it's gotta go to you. Yeah, ready? Yeah, one, two, three. There it goes. Pretty much bang on at 36. Okay. 36 and Boom, 36. And yeah, pretty much the same. Pretty much exactly the same. Okay, so we'll just do a couple others to make sure. Forty-five and a half. Forty-five and three quarters. So it can actually come up. So the back end might be off. Oh wait, my measuring might be off. maybe an eighth of an inch. So I'm gonna say that's within within spec. I don't think it's gonna look like it's crab walking at that point. I measured to the middle here. Yep. And then I measured to the middle here to line those. Oh, that's a good idea. Oh. So we're uh, 49 and a half, perfectly. Yeah, we're about a half inch that way. Ready, one, two, three. That move? Yep. So that is 48 and a half bangers. We actually need to come back this way. Like, <laughs> we went we went a little too far. Three, come on. Come on. Oh, okay. We move. Yeah. And it just, it doesn't need a lot. I'm just kind of doing the perfectionism thing here. 19 and a half there. Yeah. No. See how your tire sits here? And then look over here, and yeah, you see how your tire sits there. Yeah, we're pretty even at I made a mark so here. Right there, yeah. So that's the one there though, right? Not this one, it's this yeah, one. Yeah, the long one. That's pretty freaking close. There, that's uh, I'd say that's pretty, pretty close. 17, actually it's 17 and, yeah, I said 17 and a half, right? Yeah, 17 so, and a half works out to eight and three quarters. And we're at like just over eight and three quarters. Forty half. It really it's actually that's perfect. Right there? Yeah. So if anything, I mean the car could come ahead a quarter inch. It's gonna be pretty tough uh, to but I don't know how exactly we do that. Well, you know what? I'm when you look at it here, right? Well, and you know what you do, right? So here's here's the pro tip. If you're off by a little bit, you just you just cut a quarter inch <laughs> out of the wheel well, and then kaboom. No, and I think I think we're pretty dang close. So. Well, and it's a rat rod, right? It's not supposed to be absolutely 100% perfect. Like it can't look weird and dumb. No, but it can't, it doesn't have to be uh, spot on. Look at straightening out. Well, you guys decided why to keep them and not take them off. They're there. It's like getting rid of something that's three quarters good and a quarter bad, right? Sure you can, but if you have the opportunity to make it work, 
why not at least give it a shot? There's a fun factor involved. And I think that's one of the things people start to lose a lot of the concept of when it comes to building cars. It's supposed to be fun. It's not for huge profit. It's not for a TV show. It's not for any of that kind of stuff. It's because you love doing it. And it's your car. So you do it however you want to do it, right? If you want to, if you want to leave it like this, you might have a problem, you know, with the law getting it on the road, but that's up to you. It's your car. Don't build it for anyone but yourself. Just like you wouldn't live your life for anyone but yourself. If it's your car, do it how you want to do it. And enjoy it, have fun with it. You know what? Oh, oops, you know, my welds aren't great. Whatever, doesn't matter. Um, I burned a small hole in the sheet metal. Whatever, we'll fix it. This thing was destined to live in the bush the rest of its life, so any progress is, is steps beyond. And it's fun to try to save these old things. But I think the other thing too, though, that we've talked about before is that we don't have, uh, you know, insanely deep pockets. No. So being able to kind of save money wherever we can, I mean, what is it? How much is a quarter panel? For these, I think they're, well, I found um, one someone bought and they want to sell and they want 600 bucks for it, but it's not a full quarter. It's um, the seam down, right? By keeping these, what do you suppose our overall cost will be by the time everything is said and done? A little bit of sheet metal and what? Maybe 50 bucks, 60 bucks worth of sheet metal yeah. that goes into it and then our time and then that's it. Another thing is we're all uh, people with families and jobs. So we've been really attacking this maybe two to three hours at a time. So, you know, like there's no pressure, there's no stress. We just kind of plug along. I mean, when this thing came in, the quarter panels were out sailing like, like uh, I think I used the term bingo wings. So when we started this channel, the whole focus was originally just on the chef and then the charger just kind of came along, right? Yeah. So, I mean, if we are if we have a, a set finish date, it would be more on the chef and then whatever the charger gets done, it, it gets, gets done. done. And that's it. And it's always good to have two projects on the go. Or, or, or more. A <laughs> million <laughs> projects on the go. But that's just, that's how we've always been. And I think any like the quote unquote car guys out there, if anybody, is watching this that's like that it's they're all the same like everyone has 16 projects on the go and five of them are half finished sitting somewhere right because stuff comes up parts don't become available something happens and you've got to sideline it for a for a bit and then you can get back on it that's the beauty of them i mean 30 years in the bush versus you know it's been in here for three months um it makes a difference the nice thing will be is when we do get the rear end under it though, I make it a roller, and then it's gonna be a little bit more um, maneuverable. That's right, we can clean the floor. No, that's ancient dirt, that's <laughs> excavation stuff. Uh, okay. <sighs> Let's go open some parts. Yes. So this is actually something that we haven't done so far in all of the episodes that we've had. We've never shot in the store. Did you know that? Oh, really? Nope, not oh. once. This is the first time. What we're gonna do now is do a little bit of an unboxing. We finally got our order in of car parts from Summit so that we can rebuild the engine and then there's a couple of other little things there too. So Tim, maybe we can start pulling stuff out and you can explain what's going on. First we have, oh goodness, body mounts for the 53. Um, you know a little bit more about those than I do, Mark. Those are... Um, I don't even remember what these are off of. This is like, this is kind of random. Because we're making our own body mounts and it's not specific to the car or the truck, I kind of just guessed. I didn't want anything too huge. I think these are for like a Buick Regal or something like that. And these are our main bearings. Piston ring compressor because we didn't have one of those. This, I believe, is our rings for our piston rings. Oh, some Brian Tooley valve train components. Oh, I think these are our push rods. Let's see. Yep. Figured to go with some nice new push rods. Obviously, heads up, or um, head gaskets. The new lifter housings 
Part of the VBT delete kit. Yes. Um, this is that trunnion bearing upgrade. So you get rid of the needle bearings and put in sealed bearings. Not necessary, but uh, it's a why not, right? Like if you're in it already for the, I think it was 35 bucks or something, why not do it? Because these I believe are, oh, no, these are all our new bolts. So all new head bolts. Um, once again, a lot of head bolts are what they call uh, stretch to fit. So you can't reuse them once they've been taken out of the engine. Um, so those will go in. Some assembly lube because it's always better with lube. These are our lifters. I'm not gonna take them out. I'm just gonna leave them in there. <gasps> Here is, oh. Dun, dun, dun. Truck Norris. Now explain why you decided to go with that. The name is awesome. <laughs> Besides the name. Um, very highly rated for exactly what we're doing. Uh, even I think Power Nation um, did a 5.3 build and used this cam and it's, it's very versatile. It's not huge. You don't need to start adjusting any valve train uh, to use it. It gets rid of um, whatever you want to call it, the variable valve train. Allows you to uh, run your engine how you want it to. And yeah, the Brian Tooley stuff is just, it's awesome. So we'll, you know, you've got that on top of it. Plus, you know, truck Norris. Whoa. So it's a little bit of a lift and duration over uh, what the original was. I can't remember what the original was, um, but we're at a 0.553 lift and an 050 duration with this one. I do still have to get a conversion kit. I wanted to get the, the cam first. Because this is why we don't need this. So this cam is a three bolt. So the old cams, or what comes in a 5.3, uses this bolt, goes up the center. These replacement ones use the old school style three bolt with pin. So you just have to get a little uh, adapter for the front of your engine. Brian Tooley does it as well. I just wanted to double check everything once we got this and kind of do it after the fact. And in the world of camshafts, like definitely affordable. That's I guess another thing I should say, totally streetable cam. Uh, you don't have to change head gaskets. You don't have to do anything like that. This is the starter for my car. <laughs> it just happened to be on that order. So We haven't discussed parts for the Bel Air for, uh, so for, your, for your 56 for a while. I put this on the order with all of this stuff. In order to get my exhaust the way I want it, I needed to shrink my starter down. And these things compared to a normal starter are, are pint sized. Uh, I guess it opens by the top. So there she is. We'll get that on ASAP. But you can see the size difference. I mean, the other starter is the size of this whole box, right? This, I don't know what this is, to tell you the truth. Sorry if this is Oh, this is our uh, plate. It's another thing that honestly, the expense, well, and also if you're getting rid of the VVT, there's a sensor that's on our old one that's eliminated here, which makes it nice and, you know, just another thing that's out of the way. And once again, it's totally affordable. I, I mean, the price was not insane. I can't remember it off the top of my head, but I remember kind of thinking, should I or shouldn't I? And then going, oh yeah, it's, it's easily worth it. That's today's mini Christmas. So all we're waiting for now are cam bearings, right? Yeah, cam bearings are just nowhere to be found at the moment. They've been on back order for a bit. So once we get those, then we can get to putting the engine back together or yes. So that's it folks. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. And comment, the comments are great. I love reading them, positive, negative, it's all fun. Yes, and it's all part of the game when you start doing stuff like this. You're going to have 
good and bad. Yep. 